Um, hi, welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to share the uh, all the books that I'm using for my Form 1B student, um, which is similar to first grade. Um, we follow the Charlotte Mason method, so there are lots of subjects, short lessons, but lots of subjects, and uh, the goal is to spread a feast of ideas. First thing we have is Bible. That's uh, the first lessons. I've got like a little Bible here. Um, and then I have these two uh, Patterson guides. We're doing Exodus and um, Mark this year. Um, so those are helpful. Those are not always um, read directly to the student. So there, there could be different things. Um, we also have this. This is uh, Bible Maps Then and Now, which is cool. It has different. So there is Israel and uh, Egypt down here. And it has the different timelines so you can see what it was like then and now so different different timelines so anyways that's pretty cool but uh yeah for bible we read straight from the bible um and then uh the so my son narrates back to me from the first reading and then we you know we might look at a map or talk about it some after his narration or i sometimes read a selection from this but i don't read the whole thing it's it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like this is a little bit more for the teacher and then um, I can pick parts that I want to read to him, um, possibly. And sometimes we also have a uh, artist, the Simply Charlotte Mason has these artist portfolios and some of them are just artist study, but there's also some that go with different um, books of the Bible. Uh, so we have the Exodus one and the another one that's for Mark and Acts. So we have those and occasionally there's a uh, one of our readings lines up with the picture, so we pull that out and look at it that too. So that's our first lesson. And um, that's always on the days that we have Bible, which we do that, we have an official Bible lesson for morning lessons four times a week. And that's always the first lesson, and that's how Charlotte Mason wanted it. So she kind of had her, um, there was kind of knowledge of God, knowledge of man, knowledge of creation. And so she wanted the children to realize that the knowledge of God and the, the Bible lesson was the the uh, priority lesson or the most important knowledge um, in the Bible it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and then there's another verse that says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom so um, yeah the Bible is the ultimate living book and that's what a lot of Sh Charlotte Mason's method is based on is living books and that's our example and the chiefest one of all so <laughs> so yeah that's what we start with um, okay and then secondly we're using this um, this is from Simply Charlotte Mason, and it's uh, by Rochelle Baburna. Um, so the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series. So this is just book one, and uh, we're going through this, and we're really enjoying it so far. Okay, so I just wanted to show, this is some of our math stuff. We'll do several kind of talking problems, and he'll use his manipulatives, and then make it into symbols written. And so he'll do that, and then he'll copy that into his math notebook. Um, so it's kind of... Uh, the, the goal is for it to be more rarely used and so to make it more special for the child. We've already bought the book two to be able to use next year. So, and they're, they should be putting out more. I think they have up to three now and they're at least four and five, it says coming soon on their website. So hopefully those will keep going because we're enjoying it so far. Okay. And then, all right. So another lesson we have is poetry. So we have um, this term, we've gone through uh, these two books. These are A.A. A. Milne, so when they were very young, or when we were very young, and now we are six. Um, and then, so each term, you're supposed to focus on a poet. So this is our poetry study. Um, and then next term, we're going to go through um, Robert Louis Stevenson, A Child's Garden of Verses. This is like a, an illustrated version, so I'm excited about that. Um, and then the third term, we're actually, it's not going to be a particular uh, poet, I think we're going to go through this, um, some of this Oxford Book of Children's Verse. Um, this is edited by Iona and Peter Opie, so I'd heard this one recommended. And we're actually, my husband and I have already been reading through this um, in the evening some, but there's there's lots of them. So uh, I think we'll have plenty for a term and to do that in the evenings. Okay, and then we have um, literature. That's another subject. So we've been going through The Blue Fairy Book by Andrew Lang. I love this copy it's just so pretty to me um i got this at barnes and noble it was on sale for five dollars last year so and it does have uh not like big color illustrations on the inside but it does have um I'm trying to see if i can find one here 
yeah, yeah it's different um, kind of black and white illustrations. So yeah, there's another one, but yeah, but just the outside is so beautiful. <laughs> Um, and my son loves this, so he's always excited to read that. And then we're also doing um, Aesop's Fables. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, narration is, um, you know, it's a new discipline. My, lo my son loves uh, reading, like being read aloud to. Um, but when we, I think eventually you can kind of, you get to a point where you can read the whole reading that you're going to do, and then they have the narration at the end. But since he's starting, kind of how you train with narration is you read shorter segments at a time and then let them narrate the shorter segment to work up to a larger time. So anyways, he hates it when I stop. And of course, he, he does complain about narration because that's um, the work, like that's the hard part for him. So, but uh, yeah, that's what Charlotte Mason said, you know, we have to do the work of our education and all education is self-education. So that is his work, is that that narrating back orally. It's a It's a high level skill, so. There's that, okay. And then we have um, reading lesson, learning to read. And so we are using, um, this is the Treadwell Primer or Free and Treadwell Primer, but we're also, um, so we're not just straight going through that because that has the stories in it, but we are following what uh, Charlotte Mason laid out in her first book, Home Education, uh, the way she talked about her reading lessons. There's about 40 pages uh, in that book where she is talking about talking through what it's like. So we have, um, I, got, I got the teacher helps from a delectable education and it um, kind of has everything uh, set up and you print off. Okay, and this is just a little bit from how the reading lessons go. So we have different types of lessons. So yeah, there's the reading lesson and the spelling lesson. And so, and there's these different groups of words. So how we start is we go through and each word, uh, we I write it on the board and then the child is supposed to take a picture of it in his mind. And um, so take take in the way the word looks and, um, and I tell him what it is and then he's supposed to be able to um, spell it out with letters. So when, once he knows what it looks like, then he can, uh, he can close his eyes and trace it in the air or he can spell it out with these letters. Right now we just have bananagram tiles. I'd like to get some uh, like wooden letters that you could probably use um, like uh, alphabet magnets too. But I'd like lowercase, that's the problem with the bananagram tiles because I write it in lowercase and then all of these are capitals, I don't like that. Um, and then and then he can find it in print. And uh, so I have I have some, uh, sometimes I have multiple of, the, of them. This one is a pile that only has one each. And then so that's one of the types of lessons. And then there's, in the spelling lessons, we review the words that he's learned, and then we can switch up the beginnings of, of words. Um, and so there's like different different lists and, you know, which probably some of you could, you could make some of these up, but just going through and switching out words. And then you can also um, dictate to them sentences so they, you say it, they listen, and then they make it not by writing it, but by finding those words and, you know, like you did it. And they, they find the words and put them together. And then that doesn't uh, exhaust their uh, writing ability, but they're able to make that sentence and they're able to see the word, find the word, and, um, and then put it together. So yeah, that's our reading lesson. Okay. And the next thing in this book is our... Um, writing. So on three days a week, we do uh, print writing. And so we're just going through capital letters right now. And then um, then we have this, a new handwriting on two days a week. We do um, with this, uh, this is the Tambo Fudenosuke pen. So it's like brush, uh, a brush pen. And so we go through and we're doing this uh, really beautiful type of um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, this is what Charlotte Mason had somebody make this and it was called a new handwriting. So it's just a certain type of script. So he's learning the strokes and, um, practicing with this pen, which has, so it's supposed to have a, a thicker downstroke and then a thinner upstroke. So that takes practice to, to do the pressure and to make these different kind of shapes. Um, it is artistic. So I think he does enjoy this. 
Um, he enjoys using the pin. So, yep. So we have liked that. Okay, and then the next thing I have in here is the Swedish Drill Revisited by Don Duran. So we're going through and uh, this is some of our PE stuff. So <laughs> it is very interesting. So we're going through that too. So that's something we do. We have play break three times a week. And then uh, on the other two days, right in the middle of all our lessons, we do, we do play break. But two of the days we do some Swedish drill and then I let him play for the rest of the break. So, yep, that's how we do it. And then for our history, we're doing um, kind of tales of early Americans. But we're using um, this book. This is America Begins by Alice Dalgleish. Um, yeah, this is a this is a cool book. It's got some nice pictures in it. Um, and this one is very hard to find. Uh, we got it from the library. Um, so you might be able to check there. It's like way long out of print. Um, it's also on uh, the Internet Archive. I think there's actually a couple copies of it there. So you can look it up online and read it from from there. And you can see the pictures, too. And it, there's also a YouTube uh, channel where they read through it. They do, they have different segments and they um, read through the book. I don't know if it's the whole thing. I, I think it's a lot of it. So anyways, those are different ways that you can, you can use it. If you find a copy for sale somewhere, then definitely buy it. Um, but yeah, check your library, check interlibrary loan, and there's internet archive that's available whenever uh, you, like anybody can make an account and you basically check it out for an hour. And I, I have um, checked stuff out for an hour and then like it gives you extra time or if you've loaded the pages, it lets you keep it up while you're still on the site. So um, that's worked pretty well for me. So, you know, depends on what you like, but this is a nice book. I, um, another good uh, resource, I, I get a lot of my recommendations from a delectable education. So another option is the Simply Charlotte Mason um, history spines for this, for this time period. Um, I'm trying to remember what they're called, but I'll, I'll link them below. Um, but yeah, those are, those are good ones too. So I might try some of those too, because we actually, we actually just finished this one. So, um, okay, here's another one that we read. This is The Columbus Story by, by Alice Dalgleish. Um, my aunt just had this, so she lent it to me and it was all right. I have read The uh, Columbus by um, the Dallaires and I like that one better. So I wouldn't like um, go out looking for this one, but it was fine. It was, it was cute. It had nice pictures. Okay, and then we read this one. This is Leaf the Lucky by Ingrid and Edgar Perrin Dallaire. We enjoyed that. So this this fits into it because he is, uh, these were some of the very early explorers uh, from Norway. So they were like kind of Norway, Greenland, and they, they came and visited a few times America. So it's very early kind of legendary type explorers. So, and then um, I have here, this is, uh, Hiawatha. So this is a portion of the lo longer poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. This is illustrated by Susan Jeffers. So this is like parts from Hiawatha's childhood. And this was one I checked out from the library before and I liked it. So we just used it as part of our, our history time too. Um, so this is kind of, uh, you know, Native American mythology or legendary uh, legends. I think it's it was kind of a combination of legends that um, that uh, Longfellow used. And I think that they do think Hiawatha was a real person. So it's kind of a, a cool thing. But yes, the pictures in this are very pretty and uh, the poetry is great. And we will read the whole um, Hiawatha poem when we get up to a higher form. So, and then another thing that I would like to use, I haven't been able to find a copy so far, but I might look into interlibrary loan is the Holling C. Holling uh, Book of Indians, I think it's called. Um, but it is on Internet Archive, so we'll probably use it that way um, because I'd like to read some of those stories, too. So here's what it looks like when you get on Internet Archive. You can flip through the pages. You can zoom in, zoom out. Um, it really all depends on what uh, format you want to look at it on. You know, you can look at it on a uh, an iPad or a laptop. And so I was looking at it on my phone, so all of, all of this uh, footage I took was just from my phone. So it uh, looks kind of small, but yeah, it's really a cool way to see, especially old, hard to find books like this. Um, so yeah, that's some of our history 
uh, books that we're using. Okay, what do we have next? All right, well, next we'll do geography. So there's a couple different kinds of geography lessons for, uh, for the morning lessons. There is um, physical geography. So we use this um, elementary geography by Charlotte Mason. And this is kind of going through, let's see, like our world and uh, kind of the orbit of the earth. Um, it has some poetry in it sunshine day and night um looks like our next lesson is poles and axis so it's got some different lessons and they're still you know what makes the 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 earth go round in its orbit it hasn't changed in a hundred years since she wrote this so it's not like it's out of date science um so yeah we're using that there's also some that a delectable education and sabbath mood homeschool nicole's site recommends that we get from the library that are just different books on different topics so we check those out sometimes too so that's one kind of lesson. We do that kind of lesson once a week. And then we have the other morning lesson is uh, stories of children from different places in the world. So um, here is one that we used this term. This is Beatrice's Goat by Paige McBriar. So this is a, about a girl in Uganda. Um, and then here's another one we use this term. This is A Day on Skates by Hilda Van Stockham. And so this is about a... Uh, Holland uh, skating picnic. So that's in Holland. And then I've got several more that we're gonna be able to use um, over the next terms. And there's more at the library too. The, uh, Simply Charlotte Mason recommends a lot of good books that are yeah about children and uh, children in different places around the world. So here's, here's one, Children of China, An Artist's Journey by Song Nanzong. Here's one called If You're Not From the Prairie. This is from um, America, but in the prairie, which, or the, yeah, the, the middle of the country where I have never lived. So, um, so yeah, I thought that would be interesting. Um, here's one from Mongolia, horse song. This one just has beautiful illustrations. Um, Ted and Betsy Lewin. I have a few books illustrated by Lewin and his are really good. So, and very, very realistic pictures. Okay. I think that is just lovely. Okay. And then I've got one here. This one's called Cammy and the Yaks. So hopefully we'll be able to get through several of these, not in a rush, because we're trying to build relationships with each of these um, countries and children that we visit. So spending time and getting to know them. And then the third kind of geography thing, the geography thing is in the afternoons we're supposed to have the physical geography outdoor geography type lessons um object lessons and sometimes you can go yeah do things outside with them so for that we're using this outdoor geography by herbert hatch and so this is uh parts of it i can read to my son but uh parts of it i read and then we kind of do an experiment we actually We've gotten behind on our things that we're doing in the afternoon, so I need to do more of this, but this is a very helpful book, so I recommend it. We're just behind on some of our afternoon things. <laughs> okay, here is another subject. This is um, French, and we do this uh, Speaking French with Miss, with Miss Mason and Francois by Cherrydale Press. Um, so this is uh, the Guin series that Miss Mason, Charlotte Mason, recommended, and um, it. So th there's they sell the book and then they sell the audio, and you really just have to get the audio unless you know how to speak French. But this is great. It has on each page. It has it's like mirrored on the so it's in English on the left and in French on the right, and the audio does the French, and it's very clear and it's very. Um, she reads it slow enough that you can hear it and understand it. And when we started this, we were like, I was thinking, what what have I gotten myself into? I've got, gotten in too deep. And my son, I think, was very discouraged the first week with me asking him to say these French words. Um, but I was just, you know, like, let's just try. Let's just, just try to say them and then listen carefully and just try and say them again. And it's really amazing how much it does. It just becomes more familiar. And these, they have series of things so it's they'll they're things that'll go together so like here's 
Here's one, I open my backpack, I take my pencil sharpener, I take my pencil, I sharpen my pencil, I close my backpack. So you learn that series of lines in French. And yeah, since they're all kind of related to each other, it makes it easier to remember. And so, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's been good. We also have this one, this is Teach Me French and More French. This one also has uh, a CD that comes with it. And so it has little, little songs. And this one is more, it's got like pictures and, uh, yeah, you listen, listen to it and it has children talking and singing. Sometimes, sometimes it's harder to understand the children and it's harder to understand the singing with their, I feel like the equalization was not done well. So some of their music is too loud in my opinion, <laughs> but it's still, it's still a nice book and it's nice to have the change. And we also use some online resources to like listen to, um, like a familiar, uh, folk folk tale or something in French where we can pick up on on uh like la trois petits cochons that's the three little pigs where you can pick up on different things and we don't understand at all but just start picking up a little bit at a time so anyways that has been an interesting adventure okay next big subject I have is nature and science so we have three different kinds of things we have nature lore which is um there's two different mornings that we do nature lore and they're from two different books so we read each nature lore book once a week and um and then the third day of the week we have a morning lesson that is our nature special study so that's it's just a little bit different and then in the afternoons we're supposed to do um nature study um so we have our nature journal where we can so the goal for that is to really make notes um every day about things that we observe in nature. Uh, I have one and my son has one. And then try and do a painting like once a week. So he's working up to that. Sometimes he, I don't know, we're, we're doing art lessons in the morning. So sometimes he doesn't, uh, he, he's not been very artsy in the past. So I, I feel like he's gaining skill and gaining confidence as we go. So I, that's, that's cool to see. So for, for nature study, we also do nature walks once a week, which is a more, like a longer, more dedicated time for nature, nature walks. So I've got these, um, this is Anna Comstock's Handbook of Nature Study. And I, I got them uh, from Living Book Press in um, individually, because there used to be the, the big fat one that was in black and white. So this one, these two here, I've got birds and introduction because we're mostly doing birds. But this one has got pictures. That, so they went through and they took pictures for, uh, for everything that's some migration. So they have lots of nice pictures in here. Yeah, so I have enjoyed that so far. And uh, yeah, I think that's very helpful. And I think you really need to have it. And this also, it seems like it has um, lessons for the mother because they, they want the teacher to be learning and excited about it at the same time. So there's kind of parts it teaches you and then um, it teaches you kind of how to give a object lesson to the children so they can um, to help them to see things. So it's not just a lecture to them, more like helping them notice things. So kind of prompting questions. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so you can do that as you're looking at something like we have chickens. So we went out and we're talking about it. it. It actually said in the book to look at look at a hen. So you might not always be able to do that. But but uh, you can talk about it and then go go out and look on your nature walk. So there's that. And then here's our, these are our um, nature journals. So for now, since he's in an early form, he just narrates to me and I write it down for him. So there's kind of a sample of what that's like. Yeah, with, with one painting there. So yeah. And then, okay. And then I'll show you some of the, these are some of the special studies. So the one we've been doing this term is the Burgess Bird Book by Thornton Burgess. And then probably next term, I think I want to start this one. This is Here Come the Bears by Alice Gowdy. We just got that one at Christmas time. So looking forward to that one. On Sabbath Mood Homeschool, um, on her site, she has just long, long lists of recommended nature lore and nature study books. So I'm using her list because I think that's where I'm getting my information from a deductible education podcast. And um, yeah, that they're just really helpful. And she's listed all of them out, like really like more than a hundred books for these topics. 
Okay, and here's another one that we have, the Burgess Animal Book. So we might use that one for a special study in the future. There's Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Um, and this is, uh, this is by a reprint by New West Press. I don't always see people talking about those, but they're, they're nice reprints too. And um, here's another one, Secret of the Woods by William Long. And then here's one I have, I thought this book is adorable, but uh, this is Mushrooms by Millicent Selsum. So I have been actually really interested in mushrooms, so I want to learn more about mushrooms. That's why I found this book. <laughs> Talking about mushrooms, oh, that's a cool picture. <laughs> All right, so those are some of the special studies nature books. Okay, and then now I've got some of my examples for the nature lore. Okay, Ooh. almost knocked my globe off. All right, <laughs> so here's the one we've been using this term. This is Birds of the Air by Arabella Buckley. Or so this is for Charlotte Mason used these books and she always used an Arabella Buckley for one out of her two nature lore books in the lowered uh, forms. So that's what I'm going to do too. Um, so that's what we've been doing, Birds of the Air. So I guess we've been doing, yeah, Birds of the Air and then our special study was the Burgess Bird Book. So yeah, we're learning about birds. We're also buying bird feed and feeding all the birds. <laughs> um, okay, and then this one might be one we'll do next term, Wildlife in the Woods and Fields by Arabella Buckley. There are six books. And um, let me just show you inside of one. Okay. Yeah, here's got some old pictures in it and they really the nature lore um, books are supposed to have a very specific kind of narrative style to them which which um, Nicole talks about is kind of the the language of nature and that we need to learn to speak the the language of nature so it's got nice lessons in it okay and then, okay, for our other morning where we, where we do a second nature lore book, we started off with this one, The Fall of the Year by Dallas Lore Sharp. And I really enjoyed this. Um, but with Charlotte Mason method, she would not necessarily stay in the same book the whole time, even if it's a good book. So we, once it became winter, we switched over to the next one, Winter by Dallas Lore Sharp, which was perfect. You can see on the cover, it shows these tracks. The first chapter in this book was called Hunting the Snow, and it was awesome. It was talking about looking for tracks in the snow, and we had some snow days, and we found tracks, and it was just the coolest thing. So we were able to do a lesson on this and then go out and literally, we found, like, we found those tracks. We found you know, chicken tracks and dog tracks, bunny tracks. I, I don't think we found mouse tracks, but we found deer tracks one day. We found, like, all kinds of things. It was awesome. So, and then, yeah, we're, we'll probably switch to spring in the next term, um, whenever spring comes, the spring of the year. And th this Dallas Lord Sharp is a really, really good writer, really engaging. I enjoy those so much. Okay, and then here's some other random ones we have for just future terms. This one's called Squirrels and Other Fur Bears by John Burroughs. So these are reprints by Yesterday's Classics. They do a good job. They have a nice, like, kind of thicker cover and they um, have really good formatting for these old uh, public domain available books. So I like them a lot. Here's another one, A Pair of Wings by Marilyn Singer. So this is a bigger like picture book style, but it's one that they recommend on Sabbath Mood Homeschool. So I just wanted to get a few to choose between and see what what suited our fancy different different times so that, one, that one might be good for summer or spring too with all the butterflies and then here was another one African Critters by Robert Haas so yes <laughs> okay so some of the other subjects we have are we do have um, artist study and so this term we were doing uh, Jan and Hubert van Eyck, who were brothers. We got these pictures from Riverbend Press and it came with a PNEU article that talks about each of the pictures. And we usually display our picture of the week or two um, in our den. And then when we're done with that picture and moving on to the next one, then we hang them up all together in our homeschool room and uh, we're just able to display them and enjoy them. So 
um, just having them around is really beneficial to me and to the children. And it's just really nice to make that relationship. We're also doing our um, composer study. So this term we were doing, Handel. This is music study with the masters from Simply Charlotte Mason. And they do a great job. So they put out, so you have two full discs of music. And then they have this little um, booklet in here that goes through. It has a little um, biography about the artist, which we didn't actually read the whole thing. We got a picture book biography from the library that, that was really good. But then the thing I really love is for several of the music pieces on our, for our lesson, we have a, you know, one 10 minute lesson a week. And that's, that's the composer study. We could play the music other times. We would have kind of a focused listening time and we would read about that piece and so it would point out different um, techniques that he used or um, the way that the, the sound of it matched what he was aiming for, what the title of the piece was. And so it, it, it gives you cues for listening. So you read it first and then get ready to listen to that thing. And then we listened to it. And I thought that was really cool. So yes, and it had a lot of different samples of his music so it was it was nice and it would um and it, it wasn't just like random 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 it, it would be like uh three or four or five um in a row from a certain piece and um yeah yeah I, I really enjoyed this and I'm gonna buy from them again I hope they keep making these because they I think they have like uh between like seven and ten of them but I would like to see more because I'd love to use this for many years um, so yeah, that was great. Okay, another thing we're doing is art. We have brush drawing lessons twice a week and we have chalk and charcoal once a week. So here is one of the uh, ones we're using. This is brush drawing by, uh, put out by Simply Charlotte Mason and by Rochelle Bavorina. Um, so we've enjoyed those lessons. At first glance, these lessons look very simple, but you're using this quadrille paper and um, it lines up with the lessons and so you're supposed to take very careful observation of where the lines are and where to set your brush and so and it helps you get uh, that fine detail so it's helping train your eye and your hand for that for when you're doing nature study and then we have also bought um, bestowing the brush so this is a an online resource and um, so she we haven't used her brush drawing uh, part of it yet because we've still been working through this but we have used the chalk and charcoal um, lessons that she has on there so she's following the simply charlotte mason or charlotte mason method for her classes so that's a really good resource too and uh so yeah we're enjoying that here is another thing that we're doing so this is a uh, some of our folk dance so this one it's called Alabama Gal, which I think is hilarious because we're in Alabama. Um, it's not just Alabama music, though. The first one, the, the dance that we've been working on is called Sasha, and it has, um, well, you count to three in Russian in it, and then you, like, say goodbye in Russian. And so it has a very, like, I don't know, Russian or polka, maybe, sound to it. Um, but yeah, these are these are great for young children, so that's, that's why I started with this one, uh, this this is New England Dancing Masters. And so this one in particular has both the CD of the music and the DVD. And that's why I got this one. Not all of them. I don't think any of the other ones had a visual DVD for teaching the dances. Um, so I was like, I am a total beginner. I am a <laughs> PE klutz. Like I, I am very bad at even taking directions and figuring out how to, how to do um, like any, any kind of gym classes. I was always terrible at that because I, I just couldn't figure out how to make my body do whatever I was supposed to do. So this is very helpful. Um, so yeah, and it's just just little little singing game dancing. It's, it's very simple. Um, so we're enjoying that so far. I think the next one is going to be called Alabama Gal, the song, <laughs> the song and the dance. So but yeah, that's definitely something I recommend. That's a great resource. We have a little, basically a little um, singing games or dance lesson, and that's 10 minutes once a week. So it's really simple, really short. It's great. <laughs> okay, something that else that's really important in Charlotte Mason method is handicrafts and work. 
So this is something that we mostly do in the afternoons, but um, one of the work things that my son is learning is how to make bread because we're bakers. I um, grind grain and bake, bake all my own bread things. So he is learning how to make just basic loaf of bread with our, with our bread machine and uh, with our grinding our grain in through our mill. So that's one of his like work activities. Um, <clears throat> he also has some new chores that were assigned to him this term that he's supposed to learn how to do and do well. And then we have handicrafts. So here is one of the books we're using, um, or about, well, we've been reading through it. We're about to actually start using the knife. <laughs> so whittling, and that's why we, my sons have a bunch of sticks. Um, they called this their, they can like make this stand up and they called it their three-legged cat with two tails. I was like, all righty. <laughs> I don't even know if they want to whittle that one. I was, um, that was like an extra piece because this particular whittle, whittling course, they want these um, forks. So I was going out and there was a fallen, a big fallen tree or a bunch of limbs. And so I was cutting it in a bunch of places to make these forks, these Y shapes. So we could bring them in and see if they were the right size to start whittling into little, see all the little roosters, <laughs> little birds and things. So this is like a beginner whittling course. I can't remember who recommended this, but there was there was a homeschool mom on YouTube who recommended this and she said she gave it to all of her Form 1B students. And I'm like, great, perfect. <laughs> um, okay, and then another thing that we started was, this was our first handicraft that we did this, this term, um, knitting. And this is from Simply Charlotte Mason. I feel like this, okay, I've read about learn, teaching children to knit now and it seems like different children are ready at different times. My son, he did not, he couldn't keep making his project. So he learned, we, we practiced a lot with making the slip knot and casting on and he got really good at that. Um, and that's good because he like learned how to do it. And then, but with regular, regular knitting, you like make the slip knot and then that's it. Uh, you never get to make the slip knot again for that project. So he would for, just forget how to do it. So he got a lot of practice with the slip knot. He got a lot of practice with casting on. He could do that well. He did learn the knit stitch but he had a hard time getting in through the tight, um, all the little tight parts of the, I don't know, making the knit stitch, especially the first row. So I helped him with the first row because I think it got all messed up the first time we had to start over. And so I helped him with the first row, but then it was still just difficult for him. So I think that's something we'll have to come back to later. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this was like the leftover bits of his project. It did not get very long at all. And then he just, he just wanted to pull it off so he could practice. And then, so I learned to knit some, and uh, so there's my little beginnings of a scarf, although I haven't done it as much since he hasn't been doing it. So we've got just a bunch of other yarn and, and stuff in there that we haven't quite gotten to, but it's fine. We will come back to it. I think that's a great thing about handicrafts is you can pick them up at different times. And um, yeah, I've, I've heard stories too about people who went to Charlotte Mason schools and they learned these different handicrafts and then didn't use them for years and years and then when they retired and they were in their you know the end years of their life they were able to pick it up and have something to do with their hands and doing things with your hands is really good for your brain too um, on a delectable education they talked about this story of a uh, of in medical school how they can't they're having a hard time with um, surgeons because most of these medical students they haven't used their hands to do nimble things. They don't have nimble fingers. So learning surgery and, and having that hand strength and coordination is just not something that we're learning with iPods and swiping and typing on a keyboard and stuff, you know, book work. Um, so handicrafts, it's really great for your brain. And yeah, I just, I love the beauty of the feast that Charlotte Mason wants us to lay out for our, for our children. We don't know what might be something that will, um, give them great joy in later life. You know, it might not be immediate. It might not be something that they use right away. It might not be something that they understand how it's helping them in, with other things. So yeah, I really enjoy the short lessons and so does my son. Um, you know, we have so many different kinds of lessons that you would think it would be overwhelming. And looking at these books, yes, it does look overwhelming, but when we make the schedule and it takes a while to make the schedule and we follow it, and we have our time limits, we move on to the next thing. He gets tired of things quickly. So it's, he likes moving on to the next thing and not being 
stuck, you know, if you're having a hard time with math, you don't want to spend an hour and a half doing math and you're just going to kill the attention of your child and kill that love of learning. So we have, math is actually one of our longest lessons. It's a 20 minute lesson and then we end it on a good note. You know, we're still excited about it and then we move on. So it works out really well. Uh, we're basically at the end of our term. We're about to have our exam week um, and I have enjoyed it very much. So we're looking forward to the, the rest of our terms. So I guess I should talk about um, recitation and singing. So we do have, um, he is learning uh, two, two poems. We had one poem, but then he learned it quickly enough that I picked another short poem and he's learned that one too. So two poems by A.A. A. Milne that we picked out and he practices saying those. And then we have a passage from Mark that he's learning, a passage from Exodus. And he is learning um, every term in these early forms. Charlotte Mason had them learn a psalm, although there was just one term that it was two psalms. I guess they must be shorter psalms. So we're in that term that it's two psalms. Um, and then also recite one of our um, hymns. So we're also learning to sing hymns, but this one is one we're learning the words, how to speak them and speak them well and with meaning. So recitation is not, it's not holy memorization. It's speaking it well with meaning, enunciation, pronunciation, and um, saying it enjoyably. So it's about, uh, for a lot of people, it will become memorization. And my son does memorize. He's good at memorizing, especially right now. Um, and, but it is more than just that. It's making it familiar to your heart and uh, yeah, being able to read it well. So that's part of it. And then we're also doing singing. So we're doing folk songs and hymns and we are mostly following the um, Ambleside online rotation. Um, we've picked some for our own, but I do like having the, uh, you know, some kind of community, like plugging in with somebody else. So I do know some people in town who do Ambleside online and um, yeah, so being able to sing together when we get w with them, that's that's nice. And I they make great selections too. And we have a French song too. So that's another one. So we just uh, picked a French song to learn and uh, and we learned that. And so it's like a little lullaby to a, a little brother, which is really sweet. <laughs> I think I hit them all. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I hope this encourages you and see you next time. Bye.